know. At least an hour. I mean, what you want is you want this, the long enough for the sand to get up to temperature. You want to bring that back over here and throw it. So this is just hardening the tips, or what? It's tempering? yeah, it's tempering. All right, uh, this one was not in long enough. Damn it. Um, And you usually go around in a circle so usually, that... Usually, yeah. So that they go in and they come out. That one didn't go in. So that they go in and they come out kind of in the same order. Yeah. So that they all get roughly the same amount of time in the, in the, in the heat. I'm filming, by the way. Okay. So you see, I kind of try to go around in a circle. Keep it a few seconds not terribly long, and then you start taking them back out. And that one did start to bubble a little bit. It was a very thin feather. So you reject them if they bubble? or it Depends on how bad. About how long does the sand last at temperature? Uh, it's, it's sand. I mean, some, I never gauged it. I usually just go through a bunch of feathers and quit. Okay. So, we'll go through. I, I have found that there is a limit. I never quantified it. And the thinner feathers actually take less time than the thicker feathers, obviously. The turkey feathers take longer. All right, so that's all we're gonna, well, let me do these last few, I guess. And then we'll be done for now. And they're domestic turkeys, right? No, wild those are wild turkeys. turkeys. Domestic turkeys' feathers White. are terrible. Terrible. Okay. They are terrible. Um, because they've been bred to be really huge breasted, and and not use their wings. And not use their wings, so they. I mean. The feathers you want to typically use are primary flight feathers, so I'll make a little bitty one for you. Thank you. <laughs> Same for domestic geese, or? Domestic geese are terrible, because they, they're, oh, that one did not. So I think we've reached the limit of the temperature mm -hmm. on, the, on the sand, because you saw that that one did not go yep. very quickly. Yeah. Oh, it's not. Uh, maybe there's something about that particular feather. I don't know. Now, what's going to happen? Now, I'll show that in just a minute. Um, a feather that has not been heat treated is pretty translucent. Hmm. Like this and clean out the filament from inside as much as you can. Some people will actually take a rod and push it up in there. But now what you got is you got these little double horns. And getting it to a point is very important. And the slit is where now? In the middle of that point. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to just trim this up a little bit more until it gets to a bit of a point. The next thing is you're going to take and you're going to scrape the top of this thing. Because what you've got is a round feather. You need to make it flat to make a good calligraphy nib. And you're going to scrape the bottom. Then what we're going to do is we're going to scrape the inside of this thing. And what we're trying to do is remove all of the wax that's in here because that wax is going to keep 
it's it's going to cause the ink to bead up inside. And you really don't want that. And then I'm going to trim this a little bit deeper. So all of that wax pretty much needs to be gone from inside here. Now, a lot of people wonder why the heck do you go through the trouble of making two different cuts in this thing. You see that we've got a cut here and a cut this way. The reason for that is because there's two points here. And if you dip the nib too deep in the ink and it's just got a single curve, it's going to make a bubble on the end of that. And then the instant that touches the paper, it releases all the ink behind the bubble. All in Gosh. one thing. Those two points will break the bubble. Mm -hmm. 